The Global Occult Coalition One of the most common questions people ask when discussing dangerous SCPs is why doesn't the Foundation just destroy it? In some cases, it certainly seems like a good question, as it's strange that the Foundation would go to such lengths to contain something so dangerous when they could just kill or destroy it. The answer varies, depending on the SCP, such as the Foundation has tried and failed to destroy it, or more broadly, it's just not the Foundation's way to destroy SCPs, as they are focused on securing things. But what if there was a similar organization that didn't quite follow the same rules, and did want to destroy these dangerous anomalies? This organization would be called the Global Occult Coalition. The GOC is its own part of the SCP universe, and someone could quite easily enjoy the SCP universe without ever reading much about them. However, there are a number of SCPs contained or known to the Foundation that have a link with the GOC, as well as a large number of tales related to them, far more than I could cover in this video. The purpose of this video is to just give you a solid understanding of who the GOC are and how they operate so that you can continue learning more about them on your own. The first main event linked to the founding of the GOC occurred in 1882, when a group of German occultists managed to capture and destroy an energy entity that was being worshipped as a god by several Semitic tribes thousands of years prior. The destruction of this entity resulted in a psychic backlash in the area, causing feelings of nihilism in certain sensitive individuals Notably, philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, who wrote about God being dead, referring to the entity. This leftover energy was apparently going to be utilized by members of Nazi Germany during World War II to complete an occult ritual, known as the Rite of Solomon. Details during this time are sparse, but the event sparked the Seventh Occult War, although practically nothing is known about the prior six and afterwards led to the founding of the Global Occult Coalition in order to prevent future similar events. Of course, the SCP Foundation already exists during this time, but they mostly act independently of any governmental body and have very little oversight. The Global Occult Coalition, on the other hand, grew out of a desire from the United Nations to have their own organization devoted to protecting the world from the paranormal. Since no single nation could be trusted with the secretive handling of anomalous objects and creatures, the GOC was formed from the cooperation of 108 different paranormal organizations, including the Bavarian Illuminati, the Knights Templar, and the United Church of Satan. These organizations work with the GOC to cover a broad field of the anomalous and paranormal, and the United Nations fund the organization as long as there is a degree of oversight from them. The GOC's mission statement, then, covers five different goals. Primarily, their first and most important mission is to protect the human race from any threats outside of the norm. Secondly, is to conceal the knowledge of these threats from humanity to avoid panic and anarchy. Third, individual humans will be protected during the course of GOC operations, unless this mission interferes with the first two. Fourth is the destruction of paranormal threats, as their existence goes against the first three missions, and no unnecessary risks will be taken to ensure their survival. Finally, the fifth mission is education, as GOC make every effort to learn more about the paranormal, unless it goes against any of the earlier missions. It's pretty clear from these mission statements how much the GOC differ from the Foundation, but their logic and intent is sound. The GOC operates through three separate divisions, Physics, Psych, and Ptolemy. The Physics Division handle the actual investigation and capture or elimination of paranormal threats. The Psych Division focuses on diplomacy and observation, and Ptolemy is the support division, handling logistics, management, and research into the paranormal. GOC operatives mostly utilize technology and weaponry that is readily available to militaries and other organizations, 
so that it wouldn't cause any concern if lost in the field. But they do occasionally use tech that comes from paranormal research to better aid in eliminating anomalous threats. These advanced pieces of technology also include combat and infiltration suits that incorporate bullet-resistant nanofibers, augmented reality systems, cloaking devices, or even full-body exoskeletons. Field agents are fully prepared to tackle the various threats they might encounter, and are capable of taking down highly dangerous anomalies, such as those capable of regeneration, shape-shifting, or even bending reality. Despite this preparation, however, capturing and eliminating anomalous entities is no easy feat, and GOC operatives are fully aware how likely their deaths are. So far, everything seems fairly logical. A well-funded, well-trained organization that have spent decades investigating and eliminating paranormal threats. So why doesn't the SCP Foundation adopt a similar methodology? To answer that, we'll have to look at a few specific examples, when the GOC especially messed things up. Likely the most relevant example is SCP-1609, a pile of wood splinters, nails, and scraps of fabric, currently contained by the SCP Foundation. Originally, 1609 was a large chair carved in the form of a reclining woman that would detect when anyone in an unknown radius around it needed to sit down and didn't have a comfortable seat nearby. The chair would then teleport to them and remain there until someone else needed a seat. This was the extent of its anomalous properties, but the GOC managed to capture it and send it through a wood chipper, as a teleporting chair could easily risk breaking the mission of secrecy held by the GOC. The destroyed chair killed a number of GOC personnel before suddenly appearing in an unused containment cell owned by the Foundation. SCP-1609 is now much more dangerous, and when reacting to specific stimuli, will become violent, teleporting portions of itself into the lungs of those who have angered it. This quickly leads to death, at which point it will teleport back to its containment cell. Things that anger SCP-1609 include wearing clothing similar to the GOC uniform, usage of words or phrases utilized by GOC personnel, such as threat entity, the sound of a running motor, or anything overtly hostile to 1609 itself. To counter this, the Foundation believes that 1609 prefers situations where it can be useful to humans, as it once did as a chair. And so they use the 1609 mass as mulch for a flower bed. Part of the containment procedures mention that anyone who visits the flower bed must remark on the beauty of the flowers and the quality of the mulch. The report for 1609 ends with a document from a Foundation doctor who explains that 1609 is a cautionary tale of the flaws inherent in the GOC's operating procedures. He summarizes how it's a perfect example of why the Foundation contains rather than destroys, and says that when you destroy something, you can't go back on your mistake. He concludes by saying that this is why the Foundation is right and the GOC are wrong. Of course, it'd be odd for a Foundation employee to say differently. SCP-2002 was a large space-bearing vessel, consisting of a spherical hull and roughly 3,000 small pods attached to it. Analysis of the vessel seemed to show that it belonged to the Foundation, although the current SCP Foundation only had designs under development that were similar to the ship. The vessel had come from an unknown location, and apparently went through some sort of temporal anomaly, but was traveling at a constant 12.5 kilometers per second towards Earth. This information and other basic details were relayed to the GOC through a covert operative working for the SCP Foundation. The GOC were not sure why the Foundation had no containment procedures in place for this SCP, but they decided that if the vessel came within a certain distance of Earth, they were planning to terminate it themselves to avoid an apocalyptic scenario should it collide with the planet. As the vessel passed by our moon, a weaponized satellite belonging to the GOC destroyed the vessel, leaving only partial fragments to hit the Earth. These fragments were recovered by the Foundation, who also found a large number of human remains among them. 
The remainder of the SCP documentation reveals information that the GOC did not possess, as the vessel came from the future, where an SCP caused the global population to become sterile. The SCP Foundation decided to send a number of uninfected embryos, along with some Foundation personnel, into outer space, where they would remain in stasis for 135 years before coming back to Earth to repopulate it once the plague was gone. Unfortunately, the ship passed through a temporal anomaly, causing it to travel back into the past and approach our current Earth. Ultimately, this anomaly caused their mission to fail, but this demonstrated that the GOC still operated with lethal decisions, without possessing all of the facts. SCP-1522 is perhaps another case of the GOC being unnecessarily cruel in their operations. 1522 were two sentient fishing trawlers, capable of autonomous movement and faster than normal speeds. They spent most of their time sending out modified sonar pings to play with whales, and the Foundation continually kept civilians away from them, mostly letting the ships do their own thing. The GOC, however, came in and launched harpoon missiles at one of the ships, quickly sinking it. The other ship tried to save it, but could not, and seemed to destroy itself afterwards. The Foundation eventually recovered the two sunken ships, finding two small, partially formed rowing boats in one of them. While it might seem cruel, it likely took a good deal of effort to keep information about these two anomalous ships concealed from the public and destroying them does fit in with the GOC's mission statement. I don't want to be misleading with this summary, however, and so I want to make it clear that these SCP articles are all written by Foundation personnel, who are likely to share a certain bias against the GOC. Looking at different perspectives, particularly in various tales, you find that the GOC are a bit more nuanced than just the common kill-all-anomalies concept. These reports show the GOC are more than willing to negotiate with anomalous entities, or at the very least not destroy them immediately, and also aren't shy about showing the mistakes the Foundation makes. Since the concept of canon is so fluid in the SCP universe, it's understandable that you can't simply pigeonhole an organization like the GOC into a single perspective. Perhaps the GOC caused plenty of problems in their pursuit of protecting humanity by destroying the paranormal, such as in the alternate reality of SCP-1730. And perhaps the Foundation caused plenty of problems in their pursuit of containing and researching the paranormal. In closing, I hope that this has provided a good enough basis of understanding for the GOC to continue your own research. While the SCP Foundation will often paint the GOC as one of the bad guys, they have also been shown to work alongside them, if need be, and there is mostly peace between the two organizations. In the end, if nothing else, it seems clear that the GOC exists for humanity's protection, whether we agree with their methods or not.